Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Friday, the 28th of January. Um, today we are celebrating the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, who was a priest, philosopher and theologian. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about him and then we're going to come together in prayer. Uh, so Thomas Aquinas was born uh, in the year uh, 1225 in Roccasecco uh, in the Kingdom of Sicily and he died on the 7th of March in 1274, aged 48 or 49, so not quite sure, but we're fairly close. He died in Fossa Nova in the Papal States. Um, so Thomas Aquinas was, uh, the Aquinas bit kind of relates to uh, the county of uh, Aquino in present-day uh, Lazio, where his, uh, his family came from, and he uh, is a fairly influential theologian and writer. Uh, he uh, was trying to understand God as best he could and actually some of his writings are very much uh, uh, linking with that he um, he also tried to uh, to uh, marry up some of the ideas that Aristotle the Greek philosopher um, put forward within the Christian faith actually that kind of amalgamation of these kind of uh, uh, more, more kind of secular thoughts to the divine thoughts and actually how those compare and contrast um, so he, uh, his Summa Theologica, which I think is about 15 volumes or something crazy, it is a huge body of work, is incredibly dense and kind of huge amounts of information. And there were scholars who were still reading and trying to understand what he was trying to say. Um, so some of the things which he kind of put forward were the five priests of God um, infused uh, righteousness. Uh, the principle of double get, there's all sorts of different things which is, I'm, uh, I'm not good enough to be able to actually kind of fully explain that, but... Uh, do have a read if you get a chance. Um, so he is recognised by ourselves, Roman Catholic faith, and also the uh, the Lutherans as well. And he has got various patronages. He is a the patron saint of academics against storms, against lightning, uh, apologists, those who are defending uh, Christianity, uh, Aquino in Italy, uh, Belcastro also in Italy, booksellers, Catholic academies, schools, universities, chastity. Uh, and uh, Falenia in Italy, uh, learning, pencil makers, philosophers, publishers, scholars, students, uh, the University of Santo Tomas, uh, uh, which is in Pangastin, I'm not sure where that is, and also theologians. Um, so we will pray for him, we will pray for all who are trying to understand God and actually do so in a um, systematic and manageable way. We should also pray that for us who are just trying to know and love God as best we can. But as we come together, let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations, to be praised and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, Anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. O be joyful in the Lord all the earth. O serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, the day lies open before us, let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire love for you now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 61. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, will hear my vows. You will grant the requests of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king 
that his years may endure throughout all generations. May he sit steadfast and may he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praises to your name, and day by day fulfil your vows. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You are my refuge, O God, a strong tower against the enemy. Our second psalm for this morning is Psalm 65. Be joyful in God, all the earth. The praise is due to you, O God in Zion. To you the answer prayer shall vows be paid. To you shall come shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. Happy are they whom you choose, and draw to your courts to dwell there. We shall be satisfied with your blessing of your house, even of your holy temple. With wonders you will answer us in all in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the Father's seas. In your strength you set fast the mountains, and are girded about with might. You still the raging of the seas, the roaring of their waves and the clamour of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth tremble at your marvels. The gates of the morning and evening sing your praise. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You strengthen the ground with showers and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness, and the hills be girded with joy. May the beddows be clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valley stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Our Old Testament reads a continuation of the, God, uh, of, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 16, from the beginning to the end of the chapter. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bore him no children. She was an Egyptian slave girl. Um, she had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abraham, You see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. So after Abraham had lived for ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her slave girl, and gave her to her husband Abraham as a wife. He went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked um, with contempt on her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave you my slave girl to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarah, Your slave girl is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarah dealt with her harshly, uh, dealt hardly with her, and she ran away from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, and the spring on the way to Shur. She said, Hagar, slave girl of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your offspring that they cannot be counted for a multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, now you have conceived and shall bear a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has given heed to your affliction. He shall, be a, uh, he shall be a wild ass of a man, with his hands against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And, everyone, uh, and he shall live at odds with all his kin. So, she named, the Lord who, so, so he, she named the Lord who spoke to her, You are Eloi, for she said, have, have, I seen, have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? Therefore the well was called Beer at Ilha Ori. It lies between Gadesh and Baran. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named him who Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come, 
the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though darkness still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, above you God's glory appears. And the nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land, or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight, nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. For you shall be called the dwelling of the, to call the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father. And to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. Our New Testament reads a continuation of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 57 to the end of the chapter. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following them at him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two of them came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do you still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And someone slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You are with the Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it under it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them. For your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment the cock crowed. Then Jesus remembered what what Jesus had said. Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock, cro cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Those who are wise will shine as bright as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity.
So let us pray. Holy Father, we pray for the day that lies ahead of us. Be with us, Lord, in all we do and say and think. Help us and guide us that we may do what is right and just by you. Show us the path that we should follow and give us the strength to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray and give thanks for your servant Thomas Aquinas, for his wisdom and knowledge, for his understanding and his writings. We pray for all who are seeking to understand you, Lord, for those who are seeking to know your will. Guide us, Lord, that we may do what is right and just by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray for those who are in need of long-term care, for those who are hospitalised, for those who have died. We pray for all who are struggling at this time, for those who are anxious with the change of restrictions, for those whose jobs have been affected, for those who are feeling isolated and alone and estranged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all who are carrying the burden of guilt, for those who, have, who feel they have not lived up to their expectations, for those who put impossible standards upon themselves. We pray for those who are feeling anxious, for those who are feeling lost. We pray, Lord, that you would give comfort to those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet. For those who are finding they are without sufficient money for all they need. For those who are having to make difficult choices between food and staying warm. For those who are making use of the food bank. Help us, Lord, who have access to share with those who have less. Help us, Lord, to do what is right by sharing in the abundance of your good creation. We pray for all who are working to alleviate the suffering of those who are struggling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, the Prince of Peace, to bring peace to the world. We pray that your peace would be across all nations and all peoples, that we may find that commonality of existence rather than things that divide us. We pray especially for the Ukraine and for an end to the tensions there. We pray for Afghanistan and the growing humanitarian problems. We pray for all places where there are problems and there are difficulties. We pray for all who are in the grips of domestic violence situations. We pray, Lord, that you would watch over us and help us to give sanctuary to those who are in need. We pray, Lord, that your peace may be upon us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. We pray for those who are known to us. We pray especially by name for Davy, Jilly, Megan, Mary, Tina, Robert, David, Peter, Rose, Sarah, Gwenna, Gillian, Brian and Paddy. 
We pray too for those who are known to you alone. We pray, Lord, for all who have reached the end of their lives and those who recently lost their lives. We pray for all who are mourning, all who carry the scars of loss, for all who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, you enrich your church with the learning and holiness of your servant Thomas Aquinas. Give to all who seek you a humble mind and pure heart, that they may know your Son, Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth, and the life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join us this evening at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. And uh, on Sunday we'll have at 8 a.m. a BCP Holy Communion. This will be followed at uh, that be at St Mary's. Uh, sorry, and that's followed at 9:30 by our main Eucharist at St Mary's, which will also be streamed online. And 11 o'clock we'll be at St Thomas's for the Eucharist there. Um, and until we see each other again, God bless. Stay safe and have a very good week, a uh, good day, and a good weekend. <laughs>